I'm going to start the recording at the end of my presentation. Uh, I will go ahead and stop the recording. So let me share my screen here. Second question for the committee is um, uh, how many, about how many minutes are you expecting? Not too many, because we just read it. <laughs> okay, right, 15 minutes, perfect, great. Um, part of the reason why I asked was I did a presentation last night for a nonprofit and they told me in advance 20 minutes and I asked to confirm um, right before I started. They said, I have about 45 minutes, so oh. okay, good. this is good to know. Okay, so, um, so great, so I'll spin through this pretty quickly. Um, we have 15 minutes, the time is 1.13, so I'll wrap up uh, by 1.30. So, um, so my name's Eric Barker. I'm, uh, thanks for coming to the uh, my defense of uh, my strategic communications master's uh, program. So I have some results to share of my uh, research study, but before I get to the results section, I did want to uh, review uh, the overview, brief review methodology um, and findings and talk about discussion and next steps at the end. So um, so the purpose of this study is really I wanted to give back to the community. I wanted to, uh, number one, this is personal to me because I think it's extremely important for students to be active in uh, student organizations that contribute to their well-being. And with the uh, significant decline in enrollment uh, at many universities, including IUP, this is one way that we can stem the tide of declining enrollment is getting those students engaged uh, first semester of freshman year. So uh, there were a number of theories that guided uh, this study. Uh, the main one is reciprocity. So that's the social norm of if you do something kind to somebody else, they're more likely to reciprocate and do something kind for you. Um, student involvement theory um, is a real seminal research project that, that uh, demonstrates that students, it's not just academics that, uh, that contributes to student well-being. It is their co-curricular experience, extremely important. Uh, we have expectancy theory is the third main theory, and uh, what that uh, what that involves is um, it's uh, basically a formula that explains uh, how individuals allocate their limited time and energy, and uh, it really involves uh, their likelihood of success, their anticipated likelihood of success, and this relates to uh, one of the hypotheses of, of the study. So one thing I wanted to call out was I did do chapter one to three defense, but this was not included because we need IRB approval to get this data. So as part of this study, I analyzed about a thousand questionnaires of students who withdrew from IUP uh, between freshman and sophomore year, or excuse me, withdrew any total university withdrawal uh, uh, between uh, 2017 to 2022. Analyzing this showed some COVID responses, but pretty much they showed that um, it's a lot of personal reasons, it's a lot of social and emotional support, a lot of depression and anxiety, and getting these students engaged into student organizations indeed um, could help, uh, I think, lessen this, these withdrawals. So uh, the committee is well aware of the um, three hypotheses in the research question. The research question is sort of a high level uh, of what, I'm, what I've been studying during this um, research and hypotheses one through three um, sort of back that up. Uh, so uh, so I, I distributed a survey, uh, 2,000 participants, and we got about a 14% response rate, both qualitative and quantitative um, uh, elements of the survey. 
So the, the key element of this uh, research project, the experimental variable, if you will, is uh, reciprocity. So there was a bank of 10 questions and 50% um, of the participants got um, with and without reciprocity. This was counterbalanced so that uh, to reduce any confounding variable, we made sure that uh, each participant got um, an equal number of each category uh, of reason to join and as uh, the reciprocity versus non-reciprocity as well. Uh, like I said, uh, 283 responses. And this de the demographics of the survey responses were fairly similar to the the demographics of IUP as a whole. 71% in the survey matches about approximately 61% or female at IUP. 20% people of color. Uh, the, the university has 24%. So this was a fairly representative sample of students at IUP. So let's go ahead and set, head, uh, head into the findings here. So um, relating to hypothesis number one, uh, the study really didn't find any effect of reciprocity versus non. Excuse me. Um, during the literature review, the literature review suggested that there uh, was a possibility, a strong possibility of finding a difference. Um, and towards the end of the presentation, I will go ahead and uh, explain, put that into some context. But you can see the p-value here is um, there was real no statistical significance um, among any of these, um, any of these uh, experimental variables. So taking a look at hypothesis two, that's, uh, if you remember, the hypothesis was that if you were engaged in a student organization, you're less likely to uh, leave. That was ex that was very much true. So as you can see here, um, I've highlighted the relevant portions here. The important things to note is that, um, you know, um, if you're a non-member of a student organization, you are double the likelihood of very frequently considering leaving. And this was a question that came from my survey instrument. Um, it's even more pronounced if you collapse these two columns. So even though these sample sizes are small, you can see um, uh, the statistical significance is there. I conducted a uh, two-tailed t-test, um, got a 0.01 value, so that was significant. And then just to confirm, I did a, a Mann-Whitney uh, U-value test, also statistically significant, despite the small sample size on that. Hypothesis three um, was, uh, my hypothesis was based on the category of reason to join an organization that was baked into those messages, there would be a statistical difference, and that was indeed confirmed. Um, in particular, uh, the resume building and social opportunities ranked the highest, um, and that was, as you can see with the highlighted values here, uh, statistically significant. Um, this relates back to that expectancy theory, which was one of those three theories. Um, really, if you if you look at the look at the uh, formula that was based into that theoretical framework, it was motivational force equals expectancy times instrumentality times valence. And what that means is that is the likelihood you know, the, the, the motivation or persuadable factor is is related to the likelihood of that respondent or that individual thinking that is going to have an outcome. Um, and then they evaluate the performance expectations and the, uh, how that relates to the reward and then times that by the actual value. This was shown in the results. Uh, resume building, number one, what people are concerned about and indeed um, the, the survey found that. So research questions, um, going on time, okay. I don't have to speed quite as much. We have 10 minutes left. So uh, how students first learned about the student organizations they joined. Um, this came from the, this came, Dr. Ortiz, are you still there? I got a message saying that uh, you had just entered the waiting room, I think. We have one committee member who's uh, remote and in fact overseas. I wanted to make sure that she was still able to hear due to any potential connectivity issues. Are you back? Yes, I'm sorry. I'm gonna use my data for it. <laughs> no problem. Wi Fi is not as reliable, not, I guess. <laughs> not as robust uh, sometimes. When... Yeah, not, can't get enough. Sorry, I'm back. No problem. Um, so, 
let's see, back to the presentation here. Okay, so um, what we found was, you can see there's a cluster of, a uh, cluster towards the top of ways that students, ways that students um, first learned about their student organizations. And you can see there's a cluster at the top of this graph that shows number one is friends uh, that illustrates the um, uh, that illustrates the peer to peer uh, communications, but then um, student organization fairs, social media, which I'll go into in a little bit. Uh, Crimson Connect is a tool here at IEP that people use to um, uh, manage their student organizations online and then faculty. Um, Tails off after that. Um, even though I targeted 2,000 student organization members, I knew in advance that uh, not all of those students would actually be members, even though we, they were coded as such in the student inf information system. So I wanted to explore both groups. So why did you join and why did you not join? So I think the the, the main thing that came out of this uh, this finding was that these students are persuadable. If you look at the reasons why they didn't join, we can't do anything with with communications necessarily about the academic obligation. So, so you know, if people are too busy, they're too busy. But if you look at, they haven't found one that they liked, or they plan to join one next year. Um, this means they're they're willing to take action. Maybe we can get them, spur them to do it a little bit earlier. Simply not interested. We can explain why they should join. Um, and then finally, not familiar with student organizations. Well, that's can certainly be solved with messaging. So not only do we know did this research explore how to best get students interested. This explains why is it important. Um, we did uh, go into a little bit of detail on uh, which social media uh, platforms students use. And um, you can see this is organized where the most frequently used um, uh, social media platforms are on the left. I was able, I was able to swap that out at the last minute, but I found a backup keyboard, so I got that all taken care of. Thank so you very much. much. Thank you very much. Um, so, um, so yes, now, um, so you can see one of the things to note here, um, I just want to call attention to a common myth is that students don't use Facebook. Well, the data shows and it consistently shows, um, that students do not as prevalent as the, you know, uh, Snapchats and the Instagrams. But if you look at the data, if you combine people that use Facebook once a day or weekly, um, you don't want to ignore that platform for, uh, for that population. Uh, that was quantitative results. There were also some qualitative results, which were uh, I analyzed um, line by line all the responses to the question that asked the respondents directly, what do you think student organizations should do to better market uh, their student organizations? I, uh, I coded those into categories and did some analysis, and it, these are the four themes that came out uh, most prevalent uh, out of that, um, out of those research. This is all explained in detail uh, in, in the document, and I do have some, uh, you can read the quotes here. These are, these four themes, these are an example of um, example uh, suggestions based on these four themes that rose to the top of that qualitative analysis. Um, also as an appendix in the actual document, um, I have um, I have uh, many much more detailed group as themes. So not only am I trying to address a gap in the literature with this research, this should be practical for higher education practitioners. You can develop job aids to really make a difference uh, with this research. So there were some study limitations. Uh, number one, this was undergraduate students only. Uh, number two, it was only from one institution. Um, you would think that it may be relevant to other populations, but into the future, perhaps um, the, the survey could be extended. One of the reasons why that the main hypothesis was not found could be that there was not enough, enough difference between the reciprocal and the non-reciprocal messages. Uh, in fact, most of the copy was the same. It was only the ending that was different. So if this survey to, if this study were to be done again, 
I would suggest the uh, future researcher perhaps make it a little bit more prevalent, uh, that, that element of reciprocity, make it a little bit. Um, also, lots of audiences you can explore. You can look at alumni, incoming students, um, graduate students, clock hour students, uh, non-degree students, seeking students. And um, I would love to do a longitudinal study um, that shows the uh, track these students. So if they joined a student or first semester, semester, freshman year, do they persist and then try, try to hit them with communications and really do a real life experimental um, uh, study. Uh, that was my original intent was to conduct a real world experiment. Uh, however, uh, logistics uh, prevented us from doing so at this institution. So next steps, um, what I would love to do is um, since uh, uh, my, uh, I'm in a unique situation in that um, I'm concluding uh, my uh, 10 year role at IUP, but maybe starting a new one um, in the next month or two, depending, or I could be leaving higher ed. Um, but in terms of next steps, I would love to see this research published. Um, if I'm moving out of higher ed and doing something else, um, uh, perhaps I can get another second author. I'd love to see this, uh, this published. And I would love to um, action item this uh, research here at IUP so people can really take steps to um, to increase students' well-being. And I think there are enough practical uh, practical pieces of this research uh, that uh, that could forward. So um, okay, so we are doing good on time. So that was about 15 minutes exactly. So I'm going to stop the recording here.